we run a, an organization that runs a growth readiness workshop program, helps people who are launched kind of make that transition to growth. But mm -hmm. in your case, what are some of the common things that you're seeing their challenges in trying to launch? I mean, obviously the money is one thing, but, but what other things are you seeing that are common just to give some peace of mind to those out there who are struggling with this launch part? Yeah, I think like you say, usually the financial part of things can be hard. And then in, in an area like Northwest Arkansas, where it's still like small that a lot of people know each other, but it's growing a lot. Right. You those connections and getting, you know, being able to get in the door with the right people. And that's part of, you know, we've been in most of the people that work at Star Junkie have been in Northwest Arkansas for over a decade or their whole lives. Cool. So being able to introduce you to the right person or being able to cool. give you contact uh, can be sometimes the, the difference maker. We do have an accelerator program where we have companies from all over the world come to Northwest Arkansas. I believe it's 12 weeks uh, and they get kidding? to yeah so they get to meet with like the right people and they get to meet uh you know might get some contracts might get some financing uh so we have it's something for almost everyone hey welcome back to the show and today we're diving into a really interesting topic with our good friend claudia claudia will you please tell us who you are and what do you do yes i would love to i'm so excited to be here so glad you're having me on. Uh, my name is Claudia Scott. I'm actually located in Northwest Arkansas, uh, and I am the director of the Kiva Northwest Arkansas Hub and head of inclusive entrepreneurship at Startup Junkie. Love it. Startup Junkie. What in the world is that? I know. I actually just traveled and had a big hoodie set Startup Junkie, and so many people stopped me, and they're like, what? What is that? So uh, Startup <laughs> Junkie... Uh, has been around Northwest Arkansas a little over a decade. Our founder, Jeff Amrain, started doing, you know, he previously had multiple businesses, had some exits, uh, and started doing consulting in, in the area in Northwest Arkansas. Had not nothing like it had been done before. Uh, and then eventually, like always in business, pivoted, changed uh, into what became Startup Junkie, which is a nonprofit organization that serves Northwest Arkansas. We delve other areas of Arkansas, too. And we do everything from, and everything is at free cost to our customers from one-on-one -on -one consulting programs, workshops, uh, webinars, we do capital, we do a fuel accelerator, you name it. And, and to what audience, like what, what stage of startup are you talking about? What, what, who are you trying to help really with this, with this program? Yeah. With Startup Junkie, honestly, we see everything. We see from the small, you know, cleaning services to the big companies, big apps, uh, AI stuff, uh, health tech. So honestly, just such a variety in every stage. And that's kind of what we like to work with. You know, we have people that are extremely experienced and seasoned in the area so they can help you if you want to scale or if you cool. already are a certain amount. And then us, we can do Kiva loans for five, ten thousand $10,000 for those smaller businesses that may just need a little bit of operating capital. Interesting. Very cool. So I was not familiar with Kiva and I'm not familiar with Startup Junkie. And so, but when we talked about it, I really felt this like this would be a really good fit for our audience because there are a lot of people who are very early stage trying to figure out what to do after they launch when in actuality they need to be focusing on their launch uh, to get off the ground. So, so tell us about what kind of things does that all that mean? Because a lot of people feel like I don't have good credit or I don't have a lot of relationships with people that could, that I could raise money from. What do you, what are you doing to help them? I love that. So yes, Kiva, uh, just all around us. Kiva headquarters has been around for a long time. Uh, the early two thousands, it started in Africa. A couple of, uh, Americans were there. They saw the need for a, a woman owned business to get like $200. And they're like, right. Instead of just giving you these $200, We'll just loan it to you. We don't care about interest. We don't care about fees. Right. Just pay it back to us in a term. That eventually evolved in having Kiva in almost every country in the world and in every cor in every corner of the even the smaller countries. That's that awesome. also moved into stateside. So we've had Kiva hubs, uh, Kiva hubs all over the U.S. Uh, and then in 2019. Uh, key, like Northwest Arkansas got its own Kiva hub. Uh, cool. And that was honestly very needed. We've had the Walton Family Foundation as a partner. Uh, 
but we are able to just help uh, people that want anywhere between a thousand and fifteen thousand dollars. The whole platform is crowdfunded, uh, so we get cool. you know that those people that are concerned about building a network or getting to know people, they're getting contributions from two three hundred people in our community. Love it. Love it. And so is it all community money that goes to the community to, to the person that needs it or or is it a global or is a global fund? Yeah. So it's both uh, Kiva, like our Kiva process is divided into two main stages. The first one is the private. So once that application gets approved, each customer gets a number of people that they're responsible of getting. So any between, anywhere between five and thirty five people. So that is the pledges that they're responsible of getting. So that's usually their immediate community friends. We help with that. So people that are, you know, uh, clients or friends of Star right. Junkie, and then it opens into a public uh, platform. So anywhere cool. in the world, people can lend to you. So it's both at the same time. Cool. Very cool. Well, that that's really helpful because a lot of people on this podcast, a lot of people listening to this podcast are people that are, are I would say, in launch mode, trying to transition out of launch mode. But there's a lot of people that still are trying to get launched. I mean, there's a lot of people that that are are let's face it, launching is not easy, and it's an exercise that most people aren't familiar with. Talk to us about the clinics and and what you're doing to kind of advise and help them kind of make those first few steps that that'll help them get launched. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the big things for not just Kiva but Startup Junkie is helping that historically underserved entrepreneur. So you know. Gotcha. It, you know, you might have not had the same opportunities as the rest of them, and but you still want to be an entrepreneur. You still have an idea. So we are do have the influence in that DEI uh, and underserved populations. Uh, but we do everything. Like I mentioned, sometimes what you need is a little bit of starting capital. You might not be ready to go and do, you know, a VC fund or, you know, any big campaigns, but you need five, right. ten thousand dollars to get you to the finish line. So that's something that what we do. We do have consultants that can get you, you know, to the right people, especially in our area. Uh, if you're trying to launch, you're not sure what your next step should be. We have uh, some of our topics for lunch and learns or panels are like a right. VC panel. So they might not be ready to go actually talk to someone, though we get right. a panel of five of six VC experts to just come in and like oh, cool. some pointers. Give some Q and A as to what they're looking for, what's going to help them with their pitch and things like that. Yeah. So cool. we love that. That we always try to tell our clients, give us, you know, tell us what you need from us, uh, so that we can make programming tailored to them. I love it. I love it. You know, we we run a an organization that runs a growth readiness workshop program, helps people who are launched kind of make that transition to growth, but. Mm -hmm. In your case, what are some of the common things that you're seeing their challenges in trying to launch? I mean, obviously the money is one thing, but but what other things are you seeing that are common just to give some peace of mind to those out there who are struggling with this launch part? Yeah, I think like you say, usually the financial part of things can be hard. And then in, in an area like Northwest Arkansas, where it's still like small that a lot of people know each other, but it's growing a lot. Right. Yeah those connections and getting, you know, being able to get in the door with the right people. And that's part of, you know, we've been in most of the people that work at Star Junkie have been in Northwest Arkansas for over a decade or their whole lives. Cool. So being able to introduce you to the right person or being able to cool. give you contact uh, can be sometimes the, the difference maker. We do have an accelerator program where we have companies from all over the world come to Northwest Arkansas. I believe it's 12 weeks uh, and they get kidding? to yeah, so they get to meet with like the right people and they get to meet, uh, you know, might get some contracts, might get some financing. Uh, so we have it's something for almost everyone. That's very cool. You know, a lot of people, uh, well, I won't say a lot of people, I, I haven't ever heard of anyone thinking I'm going to Bentonville to go get training to be a startup. Usually they're going to get Walmart, right? But right. uh, but what you're doing is you're taking that kind of infrastructure of that community of people who are service providers, product providers, a lot of people in that area who are who are doing quite well in the Walmart ecosystem, yeah. and their funds, their training, their network is accessible through Startup Junkie. And even just in, I would say, in the last less than a decade, Northwest Arkansas has become this hub. Uh, for startup companies. So we see some of them sometimes move out of Silicon Valley into Northwest Arkansas. And wow. 
Ben Bell. And it's really interesting to also see just a cultural shock into, oh my God, there's cows and grass <laughs> everywhere, but we're building <laughs> the most impressive things here. Uh, right. So it's, it's really interesting to see that shift into just, you know, like what we're known for, Walmart country, into this right. really just plethora of like resources and information for, you know, entrepreneurs all over the world. I am so glad you're here. And I just wanted to take a few seconds to tell you about a program that we have assembled with a lot of our podcast guests and a lot of people who are listening to the show who are feeling the same way that they do. There's a recurring theme. You'll hear a lot of these founders talk about I couldn't have done it without my team. I couldn't have done it without a, a support group of peers. I couldn't have done it without having someone to talk to that understood my feeling of isolation as an operator of my business. You see, you're not alone. It is hard running a business and it's even harder when you know you can't express all your deepest concerns and frustrations with your executive team. It makes them nervous. It gets them scared. You don't want scared people on your executive team. So where do you turn? The Captain's Council is where you turn. The Captain's Council it is an organization that we are put together with podcast guests, as well as people who are listening, who are in the same boat. You see, peers are the only ones that can give you the type of empathy, the type of advice that only a founder or operator know and understand. Go check it out at captainscouncil.com. I know you're gonna love what you see there. We have put together an organizational structure that has small group settings, a global community of founders and operators, as well as monthly and quarterly in-person events. You're gonna love what you see there. I can't wait for you to check it out and enjoy the rest of this episode. I love it, I love it. So, so speaking to people who are, say, not necessarily in need of being, uh, you know, of startup help, but people who have made it, who have been successful, is there room for them to come in and assist from that perspective of being mentors, being, you know, providing some funds for some scholarship or whatever. And what does that look like on the flip side of all this? I love that because we, we do have had some, some really good success stories. Uh, and I know both of our founders worked with what is now Slim's chicken and it came from North. Oh, cool. They, you know, worked with them and now they're, you know, even seeing them just from afar, I wasn't there when that, you know, was happening, but being able to see just now a global, uh, chain of food is it's pretty impressive i think there's definitely just even like i was I, I was mentioning off camera we do have a startup junkies podcast and we've had that for a long time and we have now transitioned into get, having a startup junkies podcast in english and one in spanish because we do have a big awesome. population of hispanic entrepreneurs in northwest arkansas so being able you know as a successful entrepreneur or uh you know just someone that just has a lot of knowledge about the topics, being able to come into our podcast for 30 minutes or do it online and just make that knowledge of well, that's a big deal. So just like we're trying as much as we can to democratize access to all of those resources uh, that might have only been, uh, you know, accessible to a few 10 years ago. Now everyone right. can access to top notch, you know, consulting or services. Uh, we also, one of our newer things is we have a list of subject matter experts, so we can have cool. consultants of every single type, but we can like talk to the select few people, uh, the contract with Star Junkie and someone can, you know, if you're in the music industry, we, I might not be able to help you, but we can, you know, still offer that no cost service and you meet with someone right. that's very, not, you know, has knowledge of your area. Very cool. I like it. I like it. So, so in, in your experience in working with startups, give us an example of someone that you've seen who was really kind of had a great idea, wasn't able to really make things happen, and they tapped into your community and were able to, to kind of get things going. Yeah. Oh, I would love to. I actually, and I use her a lot as my success story, so I can always, yeah. I know, let me go public with her. But uh, when I was recently had joined Star Junkie, uh, I met this, you know, client of us, her name is Chris, and she wanted a uh, key belong. So, I, you know, I met with her first in person and this was right, right after COVID. So we can just kind of go right. over, over the worst times. Uh, she had lost her job before COVID 
And she said, okay, what I, you know, and it was still that on certain times. So she's like, I've always wanted to do candy. Like my grandmother, yeah. my mother gave me these recipes and I just really believed that it would be really fun and, and, and yeah. profitable. So she gets a uh, brick and mortar and starts doing it. People love it, but it was COVID. Uh, prices were iffy. She <laughs> was starting to business right at COVID. You know, so there's a lot of things at play. Right. She, keep, she couldn't keep the brick and mortar. She came to us a few months after and she's like, you know, I still want to do this. I still believe in the product I make. I still believe right. that it's a good idea. But, you know, I've already had this fail. What can I do? So, you know, she needed some funds for different machines and to like, you know, make her her operations much faster. Uh, and right. that's been about a year and a half since then. And she just keeps skyrocketing and skyrocketing. And everyone loves her products. Love so it's, it. I, we love seeing her. She's just an amazing woman, an amazing woman business owner. What is the candy? I got to know. Honestly, she makes everything. Uh, we actually hired her as a contractor for, we had, we finally gave $1 million in loans. So we had a big party and she makes this uh, like snapping turtles, but with jalapeno. So like you Whoa. eat and it's just like yummy chocolate and like, you know, fillings. And then it just kicks. And wow. Every like it was the talk of the party. They're like, what am I eating? Because it's the most two different flavors and somehow it's delicious. So, and I love that it is a different product. She believed in it from the start and knew that no matter what, you know, her losing her job at first was a perfect opportunity to get this done. Did it by herself. Couldn't really keep the store. Came to us and we've given her as much support as we can. Awesome. Awesome. You know, a lot of people feel like, um, you know, if I just hang on for another year, if I just hang on for another few months, the, the, the tables will turn and things will start to work. What was it about her that you saw that actually gave you the hope that it could work and that it would, you know, there was a, 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 a light at the end of the tunnel? Yeah, and I think a lot of it is sometimes, and it happened to me, I'd started uh, also a business right in the middle of COVID. So that was just such an uncertain time. And I had right. been, Northwest Arkansas area for a few years, but I actually wasn't involved in, you know, in the ecosystem and in the resources. Right. I remember feeling, first of all, super alienated. I'm like, oh my God, I'm the only yeah. one that struggles. Who do I, like, clearly this is only happening to me when there's millions right. of people. So like finally being able to like take that step and join the ecosystem, we've seen just how important the you know the recommendation of one person can be so that's what we yeah. always heard you know once they're ready to leave the comfort zone of like i really you know i don't want to network i don't like going to these things and then right. we see them actually step in you know out of their comfort zone and into those resources their businesses go from like day to night so like you know being able to, you would only takes the right person that's sitting right next sure. to you or it takes the right person to shake your hand and then they give you a big contract. So we, I, that's what I always urge you and I urge our customers. And that's what I've seen on her too, is just like being able to be go out from, there. Yeah. Perceive like the cover. I don't, I don't have to network. I, you know, make candy. I can stay at home uh, and right. to let me be in everything that you have and get my word out there. I love it. I love it. That's a really great story. And, and for those of you listening, you know, there's a lot to be learned here. There's a lot to, uh, there's a lot of lessons to learn. Startup is not easy. Startup is lonely. Startup is hard to figure out on your own. Uh, the community aspect is something that I totally believe in. Uh, I have uh, a lot of people joining our captain's council, which is a community for, it's a peer advisory board community. What are you guys doing with Startup Junkie to kind of help that peer network grow and kind of help them gain some some traction with each other and helping kind of be there to advise through these challenges that they're facing alone? I kind of love that I've had almost a program for everything that you've said. Uh, so we actually have uh, on Wednesday mornings, we have One Million Cups, which is not a program from, from Startup Junkie originally. Right. But we I did in Northwest Arkansas. And so right. this is, you know, any entrepreneur coming in talking for 10, 15 minutes and you get a room full of people that, you know, it's diverse in itself, you know, directors of companies, CEOs, Walmart, uh, Walmart entrepreneur, you know, Walmart people, entrepreneurs, you get like all this diverse totally. people with so much knowledge once a week, you know, 
you present it for 10 minutes and then not only do they ask questions or they give you suggestions on your pitch or they ask you things that you might have not thought about but right. they also the last question that we always ask is so what do you need from the community how can the community right. of people that are here help you so it becomes more than just like a coffee and a in a pitch you know and in sure. a power but it really is actionable for both the person who was presenting and the community gets a sense of accountability too. Like I'm being right. here and it means I am going to pledge to help you if there is a way I can do that. Uh, so those are really big and I think they're, they're very, very helpful. Uh, and like I said, our, we have this new list of, we call them subject matter experts of all kinds. They're all people from the community. Most of them startup junkie, either former clients or success stories right. that are now using their time to help, you know, the next generation of entrepreneurs. Very cool. Very cool. I love it. You know, there's so much value of what you guys are doing and how you're helping people. Uh, for those of you listening who aren't in Northwestern uh, Arkansas, uh, be keep your eyes out because there are a lot of great communities that you can be a part of. One Million Cups is also here in Utah. I've, I've been, uh, I used to be very involved in the One Million Cups here in Utah and it's very interesting, very fun place to network and get to hear other people's stories because you're not alone. You're not the only person who is trying to launch a business. You're not the only one struggling with payroll. You're not the only one struggling with employees who rip you off. You're not the, you know, I mean, we could go through a list of problems that startup owners face. You're not alone. Right. And when you feel like you're alone, it feels very hopeless and you can't move forward. But communities like Startup Junkie, communities like One Million Cups, communities like Captain's Council, these are all there to help provide that support so that you can maintain your momentum mm -hmm. and hopefully increase through expanding your network. Is that fair? Yeah, no, absolutely. And even if you're not in Northwest Arkansas, like I mentioned, our accelerator program is all over the U.S., like for companies all cool. over the U.S. and the world. And we'd love to get everyone on the podcast. So that's also something that we can do virtually. So cool. if you got, if someone listening is interested in the Startup Junkie mission and service, still feel free to reach out. We'd love to find a way to plug you in. Love it. Love it. Oh my gosh. Well, Claudia, I got to thank you for your time today. This has been really, really helpful. And it's definitely hitting a piece of our audience that we don't normally address. And that is the startup. You know, there is a significant amount of effort that goes into every startup and you are rock stars. Keep on moving, get yourself out of startup into, into transitioning into growth mode. And now you're really on a path to, you know, the end result that you were hoping for probably when you started the business. But Claudia, thank you so much for taking the time and so much for, thank you so much for being part of the organization that's helping these people. Anything else you want to add to that at the end? No, I appreciate you, Todd, for having me and for giving the space. I think that along is very important, just having the space to be able to talk about this. Uh, and then, you know, you're one of those resources that people can tap into. And I think that's phenomenal. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Claudia. And for the rest of you, don't hesitate to check out what she's got going on. Her links are down in the bio below. And uh, we can't wait to catch up with you on the next episode. Thanks, Claudia. Thanks. Hey, welcome back. Isn't Claudia the best? I got to say, uh, when I was doing my pre-call with her and discovered that she had Tourette's syndrome, I thought, oh my goodness, what a brave woman. And I'm going to tell you, she is a brave woman. I can't even imagine... Um, coming into a public forum like a podcast interview uh, dealing with that and her bravery and her knowledge and her kindness and and clearly her caring uh, are strong attributes for Claudia and bravo to her for making it through the interview and for doing what she's doing to promote the goodness that she's trying to give to the world. Nonprofits are amazing and the way that she's helping produce uh, revenue opportunities for small businesses. I just love it. I had to have her on the show. So Claudia, thank you for taking the time to do what you just did. And I really admire you. Uh, for those of you who are, are just new to the channel, new to what we're doing, this whole program is designed around helping people to grow and scale their businesses. Today's episode was obviously geared more towards the startup and launch phase of business. But most of the time we are geared towards a specific path of growth readiness, determining whether your business is ready to grow or not. Because that's our focus and because that's what we try to help people do, we've come up with a, a free assessment that we'd love for you to try. Go to growthreadiness.com, growthreadiness.com and check it out. 
It's a free assessment that allows you to kind of deep dive into your own emotional, uh, mental way that you look at your business and how you identify yourself with different statements. These statements then give you an idea of where your growth blockers really are in the way that you're trying to build and grow your business. It's a fun test to take. It's a fun way to uh, have your managers even take it with you and identify the ways that each of you look at your business and the ways that the, the way you look at it maybe needs some help in some areas and maybe you're running perfectly in others. This is gonna be a great tool for you to identify what are the growth blockers keeping you from reaching your best potential. I hope you take it. Check it out at growthreadiness.com. It's all free. There is no obligation to buy anything. We're grateful that we have your, your input and we will catch up with you on the next episode. Thank you.